Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Okay, so this video, post-fight review, Nathan Gorman, Thomas Selleck, and after we get through the brief action, which a few question marks about whether there was uh, some willingness to hit the canvas, we'll talk about Gorman, the what next, potential options. Back of the video, we'll also briefly mention Matty Harris, heavyweight, who was also on the card. So Nathan Gorman, Thomas Selleck. Gorman had said uh, ahead of this fight he was going to destroy Thomas Selleck under three rounds. And he didn't need three, he just needed one. Banging out um, Selleck, uh, dropping him twice along the way. There were a couple of question marks certainly about those knockdowns. One, he sort of clipped him with the right hand. There was a delayed reaction and then it just didn't look quite natural. Selleck falls to the canvas. The second knockdown, Gorman's on him, and there's a couple of shots that land, but nothing that you go, well, that was a knockout punch. He goes down, he gets up, tries to beat the count, and staggers backwards, and something about that didn't really look natural either. It looked a little bit acted, but Thomas Selleck, we knew what he was here for. This was a farcical um, fight, Nathan Gorman, Thomas Selleck. Selleck completely overmatched in there for a payday, and he made sure he didn't take too much punishment, and he was out of there in the first round. Gorman did his job though. He came forward, the jab was good, he was letting his hands go, right hand, left hooks to the body, left hooks to the head, but it was all over inside about two minutes or so. Thomas Selleck stopped in that first round. So Gorman wins, but the question is, I guess, well, well so what? This was a garbage fight. His promoters, Wasserman, have this fight, uh, this card on Channel 5. Gorman heavily featured on this card, and it's just a dreadful matchup. Thomas Selleck is absolute garbage, and we saw that against Cash Ali whenever they fought, was it a year or so ago? Um, and this is well below where Nathan Gorman should be fighting. The fact that they can't get him any opponents, they're doing no better for Gorman than Frank Warren was. Frank Warren treated Gorman like an absolute spare part, threw him in at late notice against guys um, and generally garbage opponents for the for the most part. And after he lost to to Daniel Dubois, it sort of he lost interest in Nathan Gorman altogether. But some of the matchmaking's just as bad here from Wasserman. They've got to do better. If you're going to have televised cards, you know, to a terrestrial audience, put a good fight, put a good match up on the card with a guy that you're trying to sort of lift up the levels a bit, because this does nothing. Nothing for him. I mean, I think even casual fans would be able to tell from the caliber of that opponent that Thomas Selleck was no good. And I guess some people will go, oh, well, the record, he he had won. I mean, most of those fights just completely padded, absolute garbage. Nathan Gorman needs better tests. He's now 25. He'll be coming into the best years of his career at some point in the next few years. He's coming back off a pretty brutal loss to Daniel Dubois a few years ago where he was uh, stopped in that one and really didn't have any moments of success in the fight. How are we meant to see how this guy's progressing? How are we meant to see if he's improving? Because based on the level of opposition, it's hard to see see that. I mean, the way the commentators were carrying on was embarrassing. You'd think that he would have just won a world title. And bearing in mind, and here's a shot from just as the main event was starting, there was almost no one there. So you'd make out that he just won a world title by the way the commentators were carrying on. And they were saying, can he basically emulate and follow in the footsteps of Tyson Fury? I mean, I think the resounding answer to that is, well, no. And we've already seen his shortcomings at a lower level than where Fury's been fighting at. But where is Nathan Gorman's level? And that hasn't been established. I think he's probably above British, uh, English level, but he hasn't proven that he's British level. And I know some people will say, oh, he's a good fighter. He can do this, that, and the other. Well, we haven't seen it yet. And that's because his promoters, the current one, Wasserman, and the previous one, Frank Warren, haven't put him in matchups where you can kind of, kind of go, well, this is how good he is. I mean, I don't know if he can, you know, get to European level and have success. I mean, Thomas Selleck is not a European level fighter. He's a domestic level fighter and barely domestic at that. So they need to do better. And the question is, well, what happens next? 
and within that Wasserman stable it doesn't really seem to be any natural sort of um, fights at heavyweight they can make in-house so they're going to have to pull in opponents and this is why they're getting these garbage opponents like Selleck but the British Boxing Board of Control did order Gorman and Wardley for the English title the that's the title that Fabio Wardley holds I don't know if that will end up coming off but they've got a few months to work something out if it is to be made and I quite like that because you kind of see where both of these guys are at. And based off what we have seen, probably it's going to be competitive. I mean, other fights that are potentially out there, you know, someone who's maybe at there or thereabouts at the same level, Cash Ali. But all of these guys are on different promoters. So that's what makes it hard to make these domestic matchups, which could propel Gorman onto something bigger and better, you know, either in a European fight or somewhere else. But um, yeah, Cash Ali, Nathan Gorman wouldn't mind that. I mean, I think at least you got to get better matchups um, for Gorman going forward if you're going to have him prominently placed on cards, on television. Uh, it's, it's just garbage otherwise. Nick Webb may be an option. We've seen Webb stopped by a couple of guys over, over the years and all that sort of stuff, but it could be a relatively good test and certainly a step up from the opposition that he's facing. He's got to prove himself and not just against garbage opponents. And I keep saying garbage, but, you know, it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth when this is, you know, one of the bigger fights in the heavyweight division for the weekend. And it's against an absolute, you know, not even a journeyman, just a never been. Okay, so we'll leave it there for Gorman and his win over Thomas Selleck. But Matty Harris also on the card. He was facing a guy called Pavel Strakowski. May have butchered that last name. This was all over and around as well. And it, actually, this is probably even more suspicious than the Gorman um, stoppage. It looked like Strakowski, the boat, a couple of knockdowns um, in that first round where he um, ended up getting stopped, were also suspicious. Certainly the second one uh, where he opted not to beat the count and looked like he could have, uh, that one looked like it was um, just sort of grazing his hairline. Literally, it looked like it ruffled, ruffled his hair. And I went back and watched it a number of times. Reminded me very much of that joy stoppage against Rudolf Jozic uh, a few years back uh, so hard to sort of put too much stock into you know the opponent when it looks like he wanted out of there but in terms of what Harris did he did his job he looked pretty fluid with the boxing the movement uh, power the right uppercut looks like it's going to be a money punch for him the jab was okay the right hand it was just another prospect level fight. He won it. He looked good. Uh, certainly question marks over the opponent and his willingness to actually be in that fight. But he moves on. Not sure what happened to um, the other prospect, Hosea Stewart, who was meant to be on the card. But bearing in mind, Matty Harris and also Hosea Stewart, they weren't listed as having opponents uh, just a couple of days out from the fight. So it could have been they just couldn't get him anyone. I didn't see him fighting on the undercard, which you can find on Boxing Social. Those outside of the UK would need to use VPN to watch that. That's where you can catch the Harris fight. Uh, but yeah, not sure what happened there. But Gorman and Harris, they win, they move on. Hopefully Wasserman can actually put their hand in their pocket, you know, make sure that they've got some money in it and get some decent opponents and opponent for Nathan Gorman next time out. Because that was woeful, dreadful garbage. Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.